September, Wednesday. It's been a long time since I wrote a journal about the stuff happening in my life, but I decided to start again now that I'm finally at Crossland High School. I thought I'd be in middle school forever, so I'm excited to finally be in high school now. I've been here for a couple of weeks, but haven't noticed too many changes compared to middle school. Raleigh is here for me, so things feel similar to middle school. But a big difference is that Roderick is here now. Every time we see Roderick in the hallways, Raleigh says hi to him, and he responds with a nod or say something like, okay. Hi Roderick, I'm coming over to play with Greg tomorrow. Okay. I thought Roderick would give me a hard time since I'm at his school now, but he hasn't really done anything yet. In fact, he seems to be acting differently these past few months. He's been quieter and hasn't teased me at all lately, so he must be focused on something. I'm guessing now that he's a senior in high school, he's focusing on college applications or getting his band to go pro or something. Either way, I'm just glad he hasn't been a baby out me going to the same high school as him. You and me go to the same school now, Roderick. Wah, no, I want Greg to stay in middle school for at least 10 years at least. Wah. A lot of kids from middle school end up going to private school, so I was glad Raleigh was here with me. Last week, Albert Sandys was telling everyone that Holly Hills was out of school, but surprisingly, Bryce Anderson went to some private school, so it's a Romeo and Juliet story. One kid at lunch today wasn't confirmed that they were dating, but Albert said he knew for a fact not only are Holly and Bryce dating, they're engaged and meet off for school to discuss their wedding plans. And I was not happy to hear about this. Now, Albert isn't always the most reliable source of information, so there could be a chance that Holly is single. But instead of worrying if Holly is dating or engaged to Bryce, I decided to finally ask her this week and plan to do it tomorrow. I talked to Rowley about it, but he said I've told him I would ask out Holly before, but never followed through with asking her out. He told me he'd rather talk about the new Joshi book that he was reading, which is called Joshi's High School Survival Guide. Rowley said that Joshi's book explained how focusing on schoolwork in high school should be our prompt priority. <sighs> I guess I'm going to have to rely on myself for tomorrow. Thursday. Well, today is the day. Today is the day I was going to ask at Holly Hills. I've been really nervous about it and could hardly sleep last night. I planned to ask her out after school and kept thinking of during class about all the things she could respond with. Most of the responses that came to my mind were, let's just say not what I was hoping for. Ha! I can't believe you, but I want to go out with you. <laughs> I'm telling everyone about this. Also, you're ugly. Maybe I should go through with this. <laughs> then I thought about how Bryce and his goons might react if him and Holly were actually dating, and he found out that I asked her out. That made me feel even more stressed that I was about to ask her out. Hey guys, I just heard that Greg Hefley tried to ask my girl Holly out. Let's kill Greg for even thinking about asking her out. What? What did I do to deserve death? Holly killed me! But despite these thoughts and the fears from them, I still, I still decided to go for it. So, after my last class ended, I rushed out the door before anyone else. Holly has her last class right next to mine, so I was able to spot her when she left her classroom. But there were too many people in the hallway to ask her out, so I waited until we were in front of the school. In middle school, Holly was always surrounded by group friends, so it would have been impossible to talk to her, but today, surprisingly, she was by herself. <sighs> I was really nervous since this was the moment I was going to ask her out. I, I, I probably should have thought about what I would say to her rather than worry about how she might respond. But even though I didn't know exactly what to say to her, I decided to approach it. <laughs> hey, Holly, uh, there's something, something I, I want to, I want to tell you. Sure. What is it? I, I like you. Please date me. <laughs> I did it. I was finally able to ask out Holly after all these years. My face was bright red. And and I thought for sure she was about to reject me. Holly was quiet for a few seconds. That got me scared. And she smiled and giggled a bit. 
Then she said we should get to know each other and meet up this weekend. Uh, sure, let, let's get pizza this Saturday at 6 p.m. I was shocked, but also thrilled. We exchanged phone numbers and then went our separate ways. I then met up with Raleigh since we always walk home together. He asked me if I actually asked out Holly like I said I would yesterday. I told him I actually did ask her out and we are actually meeting this weekend. I was nervous how he would react since I thought he might get jealous, but he suddenly got excited. Yippee! This is great, Greg. Come to my house so I can share Joshy's wisdom with you. Now, I didn't think I needed any advice from Joshy of all people, but I decided to go along with it to make Rowley happy. We went to his room and he showed me one of his Joshy albums. Raleigh told me that the album was all about relationships and would help me be a boyfriend that Joshy would approve of. He said that the album was called Wild Animal Heart because Joshy says it's important to control our wild animal hearts in relationship and most importantly not rush into having sex. I told Raleigh that I was just getting pizza with Holly, jeesh. So I didn't need to think about any of that stuff, but Raleigh disagreed with me for once. Well, Joshy says sex education is important, Greg, and you need to know this well. You know, I was surprised that Rowley was comfortable talking about this stuff, especially how he reacted during sex ed in middle school. And these are some images of what STDs do to your genitalia. Do you still want to have a sexual relationship now? <laughs> I'm feeling a bit queasy. I guess Joshy was able to talk about sex without scaring people like they do in school. Raleigh told me to hold on to the album and listen to it when I had time. He also said he would keep me updated about other things Joshy said about relationships. I guess I should be glad that he's happy for me and not upset that we might hang out less often if I date Holly, which is a good thing. I went home after that talk and hid a Joshy album in my closet. The last thing I need is mom finding out and asking me why I have it. Not because of the topic of the albums, but more of because she might think I'm a Joshi fan, huh? <laughs> now, I had to worry about my meetup with Holly this Saturday, but I was nervous about meeting with Holly. But a bigger problem was how I would get there. The pizza place she suggested is about a 20 minute drive from here where I live, so I need to get a ride from someone. Now, I don't want anyone in my family finding out about this because I know it'll just cause problems. And if I ask mom or dad for a ride for asking, they'll probably push me into saying who I'm meeting up with. And if they find out it's with Holly, I know they'll overreact. As always, uh, uh, I know what that means. That leaves only one person for me to ask a ride for. I went to Roderick's room to see if he could drive me to my meetup with Holly this Saturday. I told him I was meeting with a friend at a pizza place this Saturday and needed to be dropped off by 6pm and picked up by 8pm. As I expected, he didn't ask who I was meeting with which is good because I didn't want to tell him about Holly. And Roderick agreed to drive me but wanted something in return. Okay Greg, I'll drive you if you need to do a favor. But remember this, next week I need your help with something and I'll tell you when the time comes. Now. I was hesitant about accepting his offer since I didn't know what he wanted me to do for him next week. I also have a bad history when it comes to Roderick's favors. Last time I owed him a favor, he cashed it in when mom found him with his girly magazines. Ah, who left this awful sexist magazine in my living room? Uh, hey Greg, remember that favor you owe me? Yeah, the favor is tell mom the magazine is yours, but I don't want to get in too bad. Do you want to break the oath? Fine. After I took the fall for Roderick that time, <laughs> mom made me read six different articles about respecting women and almost made me join my school's feminist club. <sighs> but even though I didn't want him to owe him this favor, I took his offer since I didn't have any other way to get the pizza place on Saturday. But now that I have a ride, <laughs> I'm all set for meeting with Holly this Saturday. I just need to make sure to follow through whatever crazy thing Roderick wants me to do next week because he's not the kind of guy you want to mess with. He never holds back when someone owes him something. Not even to his parents. Okay, I've just accepted your $5 loan. Make sure to pay me back for interest in $7. Oh, and if you don't do it, I'm taking your toys as collateral. Uh, but 
I'll worry about Roderick's favor later. I just need to get through school tomorrow and then <laughs> I meet Holly the day after. It will be perfect. Friday. <laughs> I have my date with Holly tomorrow. I haven't used the word date to describe our meetup on Saturday before, but then I thought of it for a while. I think I can call it a date. I was excited about a date, but still nervous about going to school today since I had just asked that Holly yesterday. I thought that she could have pretended to want to go on a date with me this weekend and then tell everyone about it to make fun of me. Attention class. Greg Heffley asked out Holly yesterday and thought she actually wanted to go on a date with him. Please make fun of him at your earliest convenience. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Gregory Heffley, you're just a wimpy kid. You thought you actually hit Holly? Huh, <laughs> nerd. <sighs> That's what I get for thinking I actually had a chance. Luckily, everyone acted normal at school, so I realized I overthought things again. I was relieved, but then during lunch, I saw Rally whispering something to some girls. I realized I never told him to keep this a secret, and Rally doesn't know much about embarrassment. After school ended, I looked for Rally to tell him to keep this Holly thing a secret, but I couldn't find him. So, reluctantly, I went home. I guess if he planned on telling people about this, he already would have done it anyways, so... I'll just talk to him about it Monday. Hopefully he didn't do out of malice. I thought the rest of my day would be uneventful, but then at dinner, mom said she had a surprise announcement to make. And dad was definitely surprised. Okay, family, I'm ready to announce a surprise Hefley vacation to me. <coughs> no, not again. Mom said that we were going as a family to a motel near the beach on Saturday and Sunday. Dad obviously immediately said he couldn't make it because he has a lot of work he needed to get done, but Mom said this was mandatory. If Dad couldn't even get out of this, then there was no chance I could. <sighs> I was devastated. Now I was going to miss my day with Holly tomorrow, and I probably would never have a chance like this again. I was getting ready to text her that I couldn't make it when something unexpected happened. Oh, sorry, Mom. Greg and I can't make it. This is actually our brother bonding weekend that we've been planning for the whole past month. Right, Greg? <laughs> what? I was shocked when I have no idea what Roger's even talking about, but I decided to stay silent. Mom seemed really upset and said that this trip would allow us to bond together as a family. <laughs> like that worked out last time. She asked Roderick to move our brother bonding weekend to a different weekend. But instead, Roderick went to his room and came back with a piece of paper that he showed to mom. He said that me and him had made a list of activities that we would do this weekend. I couldn't see what was written on the paper, but he must have prepared it a long time ago for a situation like this. I guess he really wants that favor, sheesh. Oh, my sweet boys are bonding together. I can see how much this means to you, Roderick. You and Greg don't need to come to our trip anymore. Mom let us out of the trip and said we could have the whole house to ourselves on Saturday and Sunday while her, dad, and Maddie went on their vacation. Wow! You know, I'm surprised mom was okay with this, leaving us alone after the time Roderick threw a party. But I guess she really wanted me and Roderick to do stuff together so that we would actually get along more in the future. Wow, Roderick really saved me with this and gone above and beyond, so I definitely need to do a good job of whatever favor he wants from me next week. But anyways, tomorrow I finally have my date with Holly, so I better head to bed now. Saturday. It looks like mom, dad, and Manny left early in the morning for their trip because when I woke up, I didn't see anyone around the house. I decided to sleep in late, but I think Roderick was sleeping even later since I didn't even hear anything from his room. <sighs> My date with Holly was at 6 p.m., so I still had a lot of time. I decided to relax for the day. Having the house to myself was great. I could play video games, watch shows, and read comics without anyone bothering me. Me and Roger could try to get the house to ourselves more often. Once it was later in the day, I decided to go to Roger's room to tell him we should leave soon. 
I didn't know if he was still sleeping, so I waited outside his door for a few seconds to hear if he was awake. I overheard him talking to someone, so he must have me on the phone. I started walking away from his room since he was obviously busy, but I accidentally overheard him more talk about his pl plans for tonight. Alright, alright, good, good. I'll see you at my place after I drop off my brother tonight. Wait, you gotta do the same thing? Huh, <laughs> coincidence. Now, I was curious who Roderick was inviting over tonight, but I decided it was better not to ask since he'd be upset that I listened in. I decided to start getting ready for my date and went to my room. I probably should have done this hours ago, but it's too late. Now, I've never actually been on a date before, so I really wasn't sure what to wear. I decided to put on black pants, a long sleeve white shirt, and a tie because I wanted to look good for tonight, but... Roger came over to my room and to ask me if I was ready to leave, but stopped mid-sentence when he saw what I was wearing. He told me to dress myself more casually, but I told him it was fine, and that we should go now. Roger said he wouldn't let me embarrass myself going to a pizza place dressed as though formally. We argued and roughhoused for a bit, but eventually I decided to give up fighting with Roger and told him I'd change my clothes reluctantly. So I need to change into whatever I usually wear. I guess I might have actually overdressed my first outfit. So I got to Roderick's van and we started heading over. On our way to the pizza place, I thanked Roderick for making up the brother bonding weekend excuse to get me out of a family trip. Roderick said it was no problem since he had tons of different plans for getting out of stuff stored in his room. Say what you want about Roderick, he may be a slacker but he's not stupid. But then Roderick said something that caught me off guard. Listen, Greg, I know that you're going on a date tonight. Roderick told me that the way I acted this week made it very obvious I had a date tonight. I was about to deny it, but after everything Roderick did for me recently, I decided to be honest for once. I told him I asked that girl I liked from school and was meeting her tonight. I got ready for him to make fun of me, but instead Roderick told me that being in a relationship might be good for me. I wasn't completely sure what he meant by that, and then he said he wanted to discuss something important with me after my date tonight. We eventually arrived at the pizza place a little bit before 6pm. I was glad I got here with no issues, although making to this point involved a lot of stress. As I was leaving Roger's van, he told me something. Oh, and Greg, I'll pick you up around 8pm. I, I, I need to do something tonight, so I might be a little late. I'm guessing this is related to the person he was making plans with on the phone earlier today. Hopefully whatever he's doing goes well for him. But now, now it was time for me to finally meet with Holly. I quickly saw Holly outside the pizza place, which was called Tony's Pizzeria. I went over to greet her. Uh, uh, hey Holly, uh, good to see you. Hey Greg, it's good to see you too. We went inside together and waited in line to order our pizzas. Holly went first and I went after. She found us a seat in the back corner of the pizzeria. Okay, okay, now was the time to make a good impression. I had initially planned to exaggerate what my life was like at this date to impress her. But now that I've had a thought about this for a while, I decided maybe I should actually just be myself instead of acting a certain way to impress her, like my brother told me. Also, I liked Holly for a long time, but still, I never really knew much about her, so maybe I should ask her about herself first. I sat down at the table and asked her about her hobbies. As it turns out, we had some interests in common. She loved reading and was really into the Slumber Party Pals series. I told her I had read almost every book in the series. She also loved reality TV shows, which coincidentally, I watch sometimes as well. But Marisa, I, I love you. Girlfriend, you can do so much better than him. Come on, don't accept. Holly didn't ask me what I like to do for fun. I told her I love video games. I also told her I spend a lot of time with Rally and we do a lot of stuff together, like playing magic and monsters. Okay, okay, okay. You run into a pack of orcs and they look hungry. What do you do next? I wasn't sure if Holly would have any interest in my hobbies, but 
As it turns out, she did. Wow, I've always wanted to play Magic and Monsters. Also, what video games do you like playing? <laughs> I was having a great time with Holly, but I was still thinking about the rumors that Bryce and Holly were together, so I finally decided to finally ask her about it. Do you know Bryce? <laughs> Holly started laughing. I sat there in silence and was wondering what was so funny about what I asked. She could probably tell I was jealous. So eventually Holly stopped laughing and then said that she knew Bryce but hadn't talked to him since middle school. Holly told me he was gay and she was actually jealous about me and him. She suspected he had a crush on me in middle school and now that I thought about it, there were a couple of times Bryce talked to me about hanging out with him. but. I always came up with excuses. Hey Greg, we should go out somewhere together this summer. Uh, sorry, my dad is sending me to military camp over summer. Holly said she had a crush on me since middle school. She told me she felt terrible about the time she accidentally called me friendly and I didn't like her after what happened. She also said she was really happy I asked her out and that my confession to her was both cute and funny. I was shocked. All of this was news to me. I never knew she had a crush. Holly said she always liked seeing Rally and I around school together and thought it was cute how we had a close friendship. Okay, Rally, don't tell your mom. So this weekend we'll play Twisted Wizard, watch Hello, You're Dead 2, and best part of all, stay up all night. There's no school tomorrow. And we'll be watching Joshi, the Eras Tour. She also said she wished she had a friend that close to her. I was confused by this. I told her that she had a lot more friends than me in middle school and was super popular. I always saw her at school dances all the time with a big group of friends. Holly said that even though she knew a lot of people, there wasn't anyone in particular she was super close to. She also hadn't talked to any of her old friends who went to private high schools. She said it was nice to finally talk to someone about all of us. Holly said that we should get going now since it was getting pretty late. We left the pizzeria and went outside to wait for our rides. It was a little awkward just standing there silently, but then Holly spoke up. Holly told me that she had a good time with me tonight. We started moving our faces closer to each other. Wow, I didn't expect to kiss Holly, especially during our first date, but a lot of unexpected things have happened this past week. Holly smiled afterwards and said we should go on another date next weekend. Then Holly said that her sister texted her that she arrived to pick her up. I decided to check my phone as well and saw Roderick text me that he was here too. I saw them both walk from opposite directions and meet with us, but they looked surprised when they saw each other. Me and Holly didn't know what was so surprising to them. What? What are you doing here? I was just picking up my brother. What? I'm picking up my sister here too. What are you guys talking about? Roderick told Heather it was good seeing her again tonight and she said the same thing to him. Then me and Roderick went to his van. While we were driving back, he asked who that girl I met with was. I told him it was Holly, who was, coincidentally, Heather's sister. Okay, I know you're confused about what happened earlier, so there's a lot I should tell you, brother. Roderick said he had been dating Heather for about a year now. He said he had been keeping it a secret from everyone because he didn't want people to think he was a bad influence on her. Roderick also told me he'd been studying more and he actually wants to go to the same college as Heather when they graduate. Apparently Heather was upset at him recently because she wants others to know about their relationship. Also, as it turns out, the favor he wanted from me earlier was to talk to Heather for him to try to resolve their fight. Roderick now said he didn't need that favor anymore since Heather came over tonight to talk and he agreed to let everyone know that they were going out now. Just then, I got a text message. It was from Holly. It looked like her sister told her about Roderick just like Roderick told me about Heather. I had a great time for you tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing you at school on Monday. Also, I can't believe our siblings are dating. I texted her back that I was also surprised our siblings were dating. I also messaged her that I was looking forward to seeing her next week at school and going on more dates in the future. I also saw a rally that texted me tonight too. Greg, I got a girlfriend on Friday so we should go on a double date now. Also, I hope things went well with Holly tonight. I'm guessing that was what he was talking to the other girls at lunch about on Friday. I'm curious though on who he's dating, but 
I'll ask him on Monday. When we finally got home, Roger and I decided to hang out for once. He watched me play video games and we stayed up really late. Oh, I've played this game before. Use a cardboard box to sneak past the guards. Wow, thanks, I didn't know that. It looks like my time at Crossland High School is going to be a lot more fun now. <laughs> this has been one crazy week, and I'm excited to spend the rest of my high school experience with Holly, Roderick, and Rowley around. Here's the offer's note after making the LLB. This is actually pretty impressive for a first LLB, and in my personal opinion, I can't wait for what else he makes. Today's reading was a request by you slash capital substance, and also not only did they request this reading, they're also doing their own LLB which is actually based on this LLB. It's called the Bachelet, and it'll be Holly's side of the story. It has a few pages currently, and it looks like it has potential. Also, I love stories that have two sides and both are red. Also, viewer, as you notice, I've done four videos in the past few days in a row. This is all part of a celebration for Greg Gets a Girlfriend reaching 500 views. And the last thing left to do is a reading of the LB you guys chose, which will be the riot.